Well, hey guys, uh, I got a message from one of my viewers, and I'll read it. It's from Brian, and he's joking uh, about a thing that I was doing on the Osmo Pocket Rig. And he says, don't forget your underwater floating camera, LOL. You need to do a tutorial video on that setup. Well, Brian, that's exactly what I want to do. And what I did different here on this particular video is I actually built a totally brand new one, step by step. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks, Brian, for your comment. Here we go. Shall we begin? Let's begin. Let's get this thing in the water. Hello, and welcome to On the Patio with Mr. D. Hey, we've got a whole slew product reviews and kayaking tips and tricks and um, photography uses on a kayak and especially on an inflatable kayak. We're going to be reviewing all these different products and these different uh, kayaks and, and where to go and what to do and how to play with them and all that kind of stuff like that. So hey, we're going to get started here shortly but before you do, please, if you like our videos, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. So hey, we'll be back in just a bit. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to On the Patio. I'm your host, Mr. D. Hey, today I'm answering a uh, viewer's question to do a more detailed review on my uh, DIY floating tripod for GoPro action cameras or action cameras, period. And I built one, uh, and I think it was from Mike Kyle that did the original video, I may be in air. But anyway, I built one about two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. And I learned a lot from building that one, that uh, there's some issues and some modifications you can make on these things to make it really, really cool. Well, so what I decided to do today was to actually build a brand new one. So I'll be going over all the supplies that's required, uh, the total cost, if you go uh, totally the way I did with the, with the toys, um, will cost you around $25, $30. The original DIY video that I watched and followed was only for one camera. And since then, I've modified it to handle two cameras because there's a problem out there, guys. When you're on the water, you don't know which way the lens is facing. So I came up with a cool way to do this. Now I've set it up for two cameras and four cameras. And then how to know where your um, lenses are with respect to where you are when you're paddling around and getting some filming done. So anyway, we're gonna go through the entire build process on this thing. So again, I picked up all new stuff today and what I want to do is build this whole thing now modified to where my experience has taken me and I'll explain the modifications because I was going for cheap and which is okay but remember you're on water and I did find out that if it's not sealed right uh, it'll take on some water in the PVC pipe uh, I found that out last, last night as I was tearing the old one apart water dumped out from inside so over the time that I've used it because remember this is on top water and you can flip it upside down and get some nice underwater pictures too so it's really cool and talk about all the material I got and walk you through this process and now a lot of it will be fast forward stuff because it, cutting and all that kind of stuff is irrelevant but you'll see all that stuff being done but it'll just be in a very uh, fast pace so hey We'll be back in a bit. All right, guys. Hey, let's get through all of this stuff here, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, the stuff you're going to need. First off, you're going to need two different colored pool noodles. Now, don't get the great big fat ones, but you want to make sure that it has the hole in it like that. 
because it's really hectic. If it's solid, you're not going to be able to pull this off. Now, you're going to need approximately six feet, depending on the height that you want to go with your floating tripod, but six feet of half inch PVC. You're going to need six 90 degree elbows and two T's. Now, that's the stuff you need to have. You're going to need stainless steel, and I learned this the hard way. You're going to need stainless steel, quarter 20s. I just had a little cheapy one, it rusted, and it didn't work very well. And when I tore that apart last night, it was kind of tough getting it out. You're going to need a GoPro uh, quarter 20 mount adapter, and then you're not going to need, if you want to go dual camera, you're going to need the dual camera mount that you can get on Amazon. Now for today's thing, you're going to need a Sharpie pen, a sharp blade, a PVC cutter. Now you can use a hacksaw for this. Some PVC cement. You're going to need your cordless drill, some drill bits, a ruler. Now, you don't have to do this, but this is something I'm adding this time. I'm actually going to shoot insulation into the pipes itself, that insulation spray into the pipes itself once I get it all, almost all put together. Then I'm going to shoot it in. It'll kind of water seal it. So that's a new addition and stop it from taking on water. So I'm going to clear this all off and then set up the work table so you guys can see what's happening. Alright guys, what you want to do is you want to cut four one foot section or 12 inches and two six inch sections. Now I use a PVC cutter for this, it makes it a whole lot easier and to get more accurate um, cuts. Now this is why I use the, the ruler and I just mark it. Alright, once you got your, your 12 inch mark done, put it into your PVC cutters here and uh, just make sure you keep your alignment correct. There you go. And I'm just going to cut it. And there's the first one. So that's number two. Number three. And number four. Now before I cut the two six inches, I'm going to go ahead and cut these one foot sections and get it done. That takes care of your base, then you need one more. I said four earlier, but it's actually five. You need one more 12 inch piece, and that's for your top notch. There's one, two, three, four, there's five feet right there. And you need two sixes. So first thing I got to do is trim off. Just from the store, you never get accurate cuts. So you're only going to need one six foot piece of half inch PVC. Next thing is to cut your six inch pieces. We'll show you how easy this will go together. Now we're going to do a little bit more cutting here in a little bit because we got to put those T's in. Now there's the risers, your cross piece, and your four base pieces. So that's all been cut. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and do some preliminary attach points to get the base and the base lines done so we can put the T blocks in. Now, with the T, you're going to have to cut some of this off because it won't equal, because it's going to take up too much space here and make this thing all off. So you'll have to cut some off and we'll figure that out as we go. So the first thing you do is take one piece, just temporarily put on a 90, 
and a 90. Okay, that one's done. Now don't put these on tight yet. So we got the 90s on, this is your top piece. So we'll come back to that later. But what we wanna do now is get ready to put our T-joints in. So you want them on the same side. So what I'm doing here is assembling, partially getting those in like that. Now what's going to happen when you put this T-joint in, it's going to extend this. So we'll have to trim some off to make it still the same or the correct size. Because right now, if we were to put that on, it's dead on. But we'll see. Let's see what happens. Alright, the next thing you want to do is find the halfway point. It doesn't matter which end. Because we're going to cut again. Take the ruler. Alright, it's right at 11 inches, so it'll be five and a half. And that's your center line, that's with it in the, the elbows. So it should be exactly the same thing here. And five and a half. Now we're going to cut this to enable us to put our T-joints in. And take this one out. Put this T-joint where it's straight up, but you can straighten them out later once you get everything in position. But you can see the difference in length now. But we should be all right. Let's go ahead and put it in. And put this one in. And already it's a different length, but I think we'll still be okay. Okay, now I'm gonna cut this one. Put this together like that, straighten this up. Test fit the top piece to make sure everything is right because we may have to do some trimming, but nope, we are good. So preliminary, as you can see here, is done. Well guys, hey, we got the uh, preliminary framing all done here. Now, this is where I ran into some uh, issues after I finished it and those issues had to do with water leakage and stuff like that so I'm going to run all through that I'm going to get the uh, the quarter 20 mounted in here and you'll need some Gorilla Glue for that or I use Gorilla Tape because I camouflage this whole upper section and then we're going to put the pool noodles on and get that all done up and then I'm going to show you how to get those corners to look really cool and then we'll uh, seal it up and we're going to use that with PVC concrete or cement and then uh, we'll go ahead and inject it and we're going to do it through these points here and inject it with that foam spray before we seal it all up uh, 100% so I'll shoot that stuff in there it'll swell and that'll stop that water uh, from collecting in here so that's one of the modifications I'm going to do also, the other modification is uh, setting this up for four cameras because I have, you can have two full-size GoPros here and run a session and a session pointing that way. You can't put them underneath because this bar will block everything. So, hey, we'll be back in just a little bit. All right, what we're going to do now is go ahead and cut the pool noodles. This is where you're going to need that utility knife. Now, here I recommend that you eyeball these in because some of the dimensions have changed. Now, remember I said you got to have two different colors. And there's a reason for that. You want to be able to know what side of this floating tripod the lenses are. So, I put a different color one here. The blue will be on this cross side with the T's 
and this side, but the green and green will be on this side, knowing that tells me when I'm on the water that the location of the lenses are pointing out this way and that way. So it really works really cool. So what we're going to do is just basically cut these to size. First thing we're going to do is the green one. Now you got to leave enough room for those end pieces. So as you can tell here, I'm allowing for that thickness and it's going to be like about maybe an inch. All right. Now I don't use a, uh, a marker for this. I just kind of eyeball that in and then just cut this down. All right, first one is in, insert it into the hole. You should have some excess coming out. Now, why wouldn't I put a floaty piece on top? You may have a question with that. Well, the reason is because I want to take this and turn it into an upside down camera shot for underwater pictures. So if you put any flotation device here on the top, then you're, it won't uh, get you the underwater shots you're looking for. Now, the same thing we do, but it's a little bit different because putting in these T's is a real challenge. So what I do is I first put it together like this. Take this one basically do the same thing. Now, the next thing is actually probably the most difficult of this entire process, and that's getting this in there. And what you have to do is find the center point. So you're going to lay, each one is custom, as you know, we custom fit it. So we're going to go like this, and take our marking pen and just put a mark right here. That tells us where the center line is. If you notice here, I put a mark right here. Now what I'm going to do is actually cut a hole using my utility knife. So I'll take the T And I'm just going to kind of do little dotted line thingies just to give me an idea of the circumference of the T. But we're going to cut that section out like that. So as you can see, I just drew a, a circle around here. Now I'm going to go in with the utility knife and basically just cut this section here out. Now you have to trim in here because your angle is going to be wrong. So just go in with your, and that's why you want a brand new blade in your utility knife. And just go in here and kind of cut that. And you're going to see what I'm doing here in just a second to get that T in there. Okay, there's your hole. Now what you do, you take your T like this and push it. You may have to do some more slit work right here and here. As you can see what I'm doing here is I'm going to force this T to go into that hole. And and there you go. You can see here uh, that the T is in there. I didn't have to split it or anything like that. Now I can go ahead and attach the two end pieces. Okay, that's in. And And that's how you do the, the T-mount. So when you're ready to put your, your risers on, you can see how easy this is to do. Then add your, 
your 90 here and your 90 here just for alignment purposes get everything lined up and you can see right here how easy that is and then that thing's in okay for the green it's real simple just run this down and you're going to see what I'm going to do with these corners in just a minute okay that one's in but see I don't want this I want these to come up over the top so what I'm going to do is cut an angle right here so I'll raise the blade out a little more and just cut like a corner joining and that allows me to butt that one up just like that do the same thing with the blue just a little bit you don't need a lot 